Over the last several centuries, ambulances have evolved from basic transport tools to true mobile care vehicles. As requirements on providers have changed, so too have the vehicles they use. Some of the early changes included raising the roof, improvements to the patient cot, seating for an attendant, simple medical equipment storage, warning lights, and sirens. The modern ambulance started to take shape in the 1970s, when, at the request of the Department of Transportation, the General Services Administration, or GSA, introduced the first purchase specification for an ambulance. It described how an ambulance should be constructed from a size and patient care perspective. In the 1980s, the ambulance industry began working with GSA to write new test standards. The test standards gave ambulance builders a way to ensure their product met the requirements GSA described in their ambulance purchase specification. As ambulances continue to evolve, new test methods are being developed to increase worker safety while also enhancing a worker's ability to care for the patient. In this video, you'll learn about work being done behind the scenes to understand what happens to an ambulance and crew during a crash, some of the key injury statistics that are driving the need for safer ambulance patient compartments, and finally the basics about ambulance standards, so that you will have the knowledge and resources you need to confidently purchase your next ambulance. As roads became more congested, the number of crashes increased for all vehicles, including ambulances. In an effort to improve traffic and vehicle safety, Congress passed several acts in the 1960s that led to the development of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, in 1970. One of NHTSA's duties is to conduct crash investigations. In the year 2001, the NHTSA Special Crash Investigation Program and the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health's Fatality Assessment and Control Evaluation Program began investigating ambulance crashes. Through 2014, 38 had been completed. In 2015, NHTSA reviewed the first 38 ambulance crash investigations and reconstructions conducted by both the NHTSA Special Crash Investigations Team and the NIOSH FACE program. The goal was to better understand what was happening in a crash so that research could be focused to improve safety. In those crash events, NHTSA found that 81% of ambulance drivers were wearing their safety belts, but only 20% of EMS workers and their passengers in the back were wearing their safety belts. Not surprisingly, those not wearing a safety belt were roughly four times more likely to be injured or killed than those wearing their safety belt in a serious crash. NHTSA researchers also have other data sets available for study and use them to confirm the findings from the Special Crash Investigations and FACE program. The best of those resources is the Fatality Analysis Reporting System, or FARS for short. FARS collects data on all fatal motor vehicle accidents from state and local police departments. The data includes weather conditions, time of day, type of vehicle, occupant locations, and injuries. NHTSA conducted a review of 20 years worth of fatal crash data from FARS and injury and property damage only crash data from the National Automotive Sampling System's General Estimate System. NHTSA found that from 1992 to 2011, there were an estimated 4,500 ambulance crashes each year in the United States. We believe that there's an estimated nine persons killed inside an ambulance each year, and most of those are in the back of the ambulance but we're not sure how many of those are EMS personnel versus patients or other occupants inside the ambulance at the time. Our analysis of the 1992 to 2011 data, as well as our special crash investigations, indicated that the crashes are often occurring in daylight in good conditions. So the message remains the same. When you're in the back of the ambulance, you should sit down and buckle up at all times. We've also found in other studies that it's true that EMS personnel are self-reporting that they aren't buckling up in some of the crash investigations that we've conducted. In the cases where we're able to interview EMS personnel involved, they're self-reporting very low use or not using their safety restraints at all. Based on a review of ambulance crashes with patients on board, almost 90% of those patients who were restrained with the shoulder harness remained belted to the cot while more than half those without the shoulder restraint were ejected. 
In 44% of the crashes with serious injuries to patients, the patient wasn't wearing a shoulder harness. Ambulance crash investigations, coupled with a review of FAR's data, help to reinforce the concern that our EMS workforce is at a much greater risk of injury or death when riding unrestrained in a moving ambulance. The same is true for the patient. If they aren't wearing the shorter restraints in combination with the lateral restraints, they too are at a much greater risk of injury or death. With this in mind, government and industry partners have worked together to improve patient cots, seating systems, and patient compartment designs to make it easier for a worker to remain seated and restrained while still attending to a properly restrained patient. For more information about improvements being made to the patient compartment, please watch the following companion video modules. As of 2016, three different bumper-to-bumper -bumper standards are available that describe the requirements for an ambulance. The ambulance standards are published by the General Services Administration as the Star of Life Purchase Specification KKK-A-1822. The National Fire Protection Association's Automotive Ambulance Standard or NFPA 1917 and the Commission for the Accreditation of Ambulance Service Ground Vehicle Standard for Ambulances, or GVS version 1.0 edition. These standards describe the requirements for everything that make up an ambulance, from lights and sirens to seating and the patient cot. All three bumper-to-bumper -bumper standards contain references to individual tests or testing criteria to make sure your ambulance is as safe as it can be. The testing criteria describes how an item is tested and also describes how to measure whether or not the item passed or failed the test. The three bumper-to-bumper -bumper standards published by the GSA, NFPA, and CAAS do have many similarities, but are unique in their own right. As the history behind each document is reviewed, similarities and differences will be highlighted where possible. The GSA Federal Specification for Ambulances, often referred to as the K-Spec, was the first document to try to create a bumper-to-bumper -bumper specification for an ambulance. When it was released in 1974, it was intended for the federal government's use only. That remains true today. Though many states have adopted the federal specification for ambulances in whole or in part as their state standard, the federal government does not mandate the use of federal specification for ambulances by the states. To keep pace with new knowledge and advancements in vehicle design and patient care, the GSA specification undergoes a major revision roughly every five to seven years, with some additional revisions released as change notices as needed. A draft of each major revision and change notice is made available to the public for comment before a change is adopted. In the last decade, GSA has worked very closely with other federal and industry partners to develop and include new testing methods to improve patient compartment safety. These new individual test methods have been published by the Society of Automotive Engineers and are discussed in detail in subsequent videos in this series. Remember, the GSA specification was written only for the purchase of an ambulance for federal use. The federal government does not regulate ambulances. However, when a state adopts a standard into its policy or regulatory language, it generally means that all ambulances in that state have to be built to meet or exceed all of the requirements spelled out in the chosen standard. That is also true if the state references the GSA specification. Always check with your state EMS office to determine which standard applies and if any exceptions are allowed. In 2008, a new project request was submitted to the National Fire Protection Association Standard Council requesting the development of an independent consensus-based ambulance standard. This request was approved, and a new Standards Development Committee formed in 2009 as the NFPA 1917 Automotive Ambulance Standard. The NFPA 1917 Committee is made up of EMS labor representatives, state EMS representatives, fire service representatives, manufacturers, government experts, and those involved in independent testing and research. NFPA 1917 is a voluntary consensus standard. The goal of the standard is to establish the minimum requirements for the design, performance, and testing of new automotive ambulances. 
Unlike the GSA specification, which was created with the federal government ambulance in mind, the NFPA was created as a tool to be used by anyone who buys or uses an ambulance. The first edition was published in September 2012 and was effective January 1, 2013. The second edition was published in September 2015 with an effective date of January 1, 2016. Work on the third edition began in 2016. A revised version of the standard should be available in 2019. The second edition contained all of the crash safety provisions developed and published as SAE recommended practices and test methods through 2015. The NFPA committee will consider the SAE test methods published after 2015 in the third edition. In addition to the new SAE testing requirements, the NFPA 1917 standard also references nearly 50 other standards and tests covering items ranging from seat upholstery to external lighting. In 2013, the Commission for the Accreditation of Ambulance Services, or CAAS, was also asked to develop an ambulance standard. CAAS is an independent commission that has established a comprehensive series of standards for the ambulance service industry. CAS assembled a team of experts in the field of ambulance manufacturing and operation in the spring of 2013. Government representatives were also invited to be part of the standard development process as subject matter experts. The CAS team used the GSA specification as their base document and built from there. The team also took advantage of the latest government research published through SAE to add crash safety requirements for seating, patient cots, and some types of equipment mounts. Like the GSA and NFPA, other documents were also a reference covering performance testing for items ranging from vehicle operation to medical gas capacity and flow rates. The resulting CAS standard, titled Ground Vehicle Standard, or GVS V1.0, was released as a published document on March 28, 2016, with an effective date of July 1, 2016. Today, three bumper-to-bumper -bumper documents exist to describe what each organization believes represents the minimum requirements to build a safe and functional ambulance. They contain many similarities and a few differences. The good news is these standards exist to help us purchase safer vehicles without having to be an engineer. Please remember, the final decision on which standard should be used in your state rests with your state EMS office. Before beginning the purchase of a new ambulance, please contact your state office to make sure you know the minimum requirements for your state. Once you've decided on the bumper-to-bumper -bumper standard you'll use to develop your next ambulance, we'd encourage you to spend some time working with the recently released Ambulance Patient Compartment Human Factors Design Guidebook. The guidebook will help you arrange seating, equipment, and controls to maximize patient care efficiency while also improving worker safety. For more information about the design guidebook, please watch the companion video using the Ambulance Patient Compartment Human Factors Design Guidebook.